The RTX 4070 Ti is the most expensive 1440p GPU to date. I have been rather critical of this GPU for its price. However, after seeing it in action, the efficiency of this GPU is impressive and may be the best GPU for small form factor builds. Let's get into it. The 4070 Ti is a GPU that has been much maligned due to its reincarnation from a 12GB 4080. I call that GPU the 4080 imposter and was very critical on the pricing. That GPU was the first ever unlaunched GPU. And Nvidia was sneaky to rename it to a 4070 Ti and then launch it just ahead of the 2023 CES show so that any bad headlines would get quickly overshadowed and buried by other news from CES. Big shout out to Ebert at Hardware Canucks for calling that one. The consensus for the RTX 40 series of cards so far has been, unless you are buying top of the line in the RTX 4090, which is starting to become more in stock lately, the 4080 and the 4070 Ti are not worth it. I also called the 4080 DOA, and in my analysis of the 4070 Ti, said it offered no better value than the previous generation of GPUs. In my cost breakdown video, I showed that this GPU would not be interesting unless the price was less than $700. And at $700, it would offer a 22-28% to 28 improvement over last generation's $700 GPU in the RTX 3080. That's a weak generational improvement, but at least it's an improvement. I also said ADA does have some redeeming qualities like its efficiency and would reserve judgment until I've had some time with one. Well, I recently was able to get some time with one. You see, a friend of the channel was able to pick up a 4070 Ti for a very good price at their local micro center. Normally, the model they purchased in the MSI Ventus goes for $860. However, they were able to pick up one open box and using their micro center card for another 5% discount, was able to get it for just $718. That's within the price of a pizza of my top end price. They were looking to upgrade to a newer GPU, however, they have a small form factor computer in the NZXT H1. No 4080 or 4090, whatever fit in that case. This case looks like the bigger brother of the Xbox Series X. And this is version one of that case. This case is only 13 liters in volume and not to be confused with the larger revised version 2, which is at 15.6 liters. They saw on Reddit a person who was able to fit that specific MSI GPU into version 1 of the case. So they picked up that GPU and asked me to help them tune it for this computer. As I happen to be traveling nearby, why not? It's my first chance to play with an ADA-based GPU. Now version 1 of the NZXT only comes with a 650 watt power supply and the 4070 Ti has a recommendation for a 700 watt power supply. This could be a concern. Also, the 4070 Ti has a TGP of 285 watts, which in my experience is not suitable for a small form factor case. I like to keep it in the low 200s if possible. Before even attempting to install in the case, I just wanted to characterize this GPU on an open test bench. To do that, I used 3DMark Wildlife Extreme and MSI Afterburner to adjust the power limit. I like this benchmark since the test runs for just 60 seconds and in 20 minutes, you can run a series of tests and plot the results and quickly understand the power scaling of this GPU. This is a plot of the Wildlife Extreme score versus the power limit percentage. You can see that at 100% power limit, it has the highest score and slowly falls until 80%, and then falls quicker until 60% power limit. Below 60%, it falls sharply. This GPU is not overclockable as it has limits that would not allow it to set the power limit above 100%. Now these scores don't mean anything to me, so let's replot it using frame rates in FPS versus the power limit. So at 100%, it hit an average of 249 FPS. By 80%, it was down only to 241 FPS, and at 70%, it fell to 234 FPS. By 60% power limit, the frame rates dropped about 10% to 223 FPS. These are really impressive frame rates. If you saw my recent video on the M2 Pro Mac Mini, its 16 core GPU only averaged 67 FPS, while the 19 core version averaged 78 FPS. The next Mac desktop in the Mac Studio has the M1 Max chip with 32 cores and that averaged 120 FPS. And the new M2 Max with 38 cores is able to average 150 FPS. For those who will say, but the M1 Ultra, 
the M1 Ultra starts at $4,000. And to get the 64 core GPU, you need to spend an additional $1,000 for a total of $5,000. So who cares how it performs? Well, for those who are like me and just curious, here are the frame rates, and the best M1 Ultra is only capable to 210 FPS. The RTX 4070 Ti is impressive. Now some will ask, why don't you use Time Spy Extreme since it is a more difficult benchmark? While that is true, it takes a lot more time to run each benchmark and the resulting curve should not look that different. But I was able to run those anyway. You can see the score of the 4070 Ti at 100% power limit is 10,563 and it does not dip below 10,000 until going just under the 70% power limit. That 10,500 is spot on to what my analytical estimate was using NVIDIA's data in my October video. That was prior to the unlaunch of the 12 gigabyte 4080 imposter in November and then being reincarnated as the 4070 Ti in January. My analytical estimate of the 4080 was also spot on and the 4090 estimate was 7% under actual performance. Again, the scores don't mean much, so let's look at frame rates by looking at the first graphics test results. You can see that at 100%, the 4070 Ti achieved 66 FPS and dipped to 63 FPS by the 70% power limit. So even the Time Spy Extreme results are a little flatter than the Wildlife Extreme results. So let's go back to Wildlife Extreme, but this time I want to plot the performance as a percentage instead of frame rates. And I want to plot that against the actual GPU power in watts instead of the power limit percent. In this plot, we get 100% performance at 100% power limit, which works out to 280 watts as shown by Hardware Info 64. What I want to determine is, what is the power when the performance drops 5%? Why 5%? I contend that you will not notice the performance drop of 5%. If I put in front of you two machines and one was 5% less than the other, you would not be able to tell the difference in gaming if you had no frame rate counter showing on screen. The reason is simple. In this chart, I show the difference in frame rates from as low as 30 FPS to as high as 240. And you can see that the 5% drop is not that significant in terms of the actual number of frames lost. So plotting a 95% line and finding the intersection with the blue line, you can find that a 95% drop in performance roughly corresponds to a power of just over 200 watts. And at that low of a power, this GPU is going to work fine in any small form factor build as long as it fits. Let's convert the chart back from watts to power limit percentage. And in looking at this, we would need to set the power limit in MSI Afterburner to about 73%. I wanted to see how the frame rates differed in Wildlife Extreme, Time Spy, and Time Spy Extreme. And I did those for the three settings I would likely choose. That's 70, 75, and 80% power limit all represented in shades of green, while the 100% power limit is shown in black. Starting with Wildlife Extreme, at 100% power limit, it achieved 249 FPS. At 80%, it's 241 FPS, and at 75%, it's 239 FPS. If you set it to a 75% power limit, you lose 10 FPS, but drop power by 70 watts. In Time Spy, which is a 1440p benchmark, at 80% the frame rate drops 2 FPS. It also drops 2 FPS for 75 and another 2 at 70%. I could easily choose 70% here as the power limit as I only lose 6 FPS, but I drop the power more than 80 watts. Lastly, in Time Spy Extreme, which is a 4K benchmark, at 100% power limit it's at 66.7 FPS. And at 70%, it's down to just 63.4. Again, I could easily set it to 70% to save more than 80 watts in the small form factor case. If you have a 4070 Ti, drop the power limit to 80% and see if you will notice any difference at all. I don't think you will. And it's the easy setting that will save you more than 50 watts. Ideally, I would want to make this setting 80% and then try undervolting to cut power even more. That would take a lot more testing and a lot more time that I don't have. I am very impressed with the efficiency of this GPU. To take a 280 watt GPU and drop it close to 200 watts and not lose much performance at all, it just shows how hard Nvidia is pushing this GPU. It's impressive that you can now get RTX 3090-like performance in a small form factor case. 
By the way, if you learned something in this video, hit that like button, share it, and consider subscribing as that really helps the channel. And let me know in the comments below if you would consider getting the 4070 Ti if you could also get one for just over $700. What puzzles me about the 4070 Ti is why? Why is Nvidia pushing this card so hard? If I look at it from an efficiency perspective, you can say that the RTX 4070 Ti gets 95% of its performance with 210 watts. Then they push another 33% more power into this card just to get another 5% more performance. Why does Nvidia think this is a good trade-off? You could use a much smaller cooler and have reduced VRMs and take out a lot of cost. Check out this video if you're curious. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe and I will see you in the next one.